Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Saturday Upgraded Commander Build video here in World of Warships. As today we're going to be looking at the newer uh, hybrid battleship, the Tier 9 American hybrid battleship, the USS Delaware. So let's crack right into it, as is traditional. So, first off, we want to talk about um, the ship's playstyle. Uh, in terms of it being a battleship, is it a brawler? Is it a sniper? Is it a mid-range battleship? And in my opinion, the Delaware is a mid-range battleship, and typically I refer to that as being 12 to 15 kilometers. Uh, also, in being that 12 to 15 kilometers, uh, you are playing around your concealment, which is quite helpful. The ship doesn't have any capacity to brawl well. Uh, if she gets caught out alone and focused by an enemy team on a flank, then you will die uh, quite quickly uh, due to your large uh, superstructure area being your flight deck and auxiliary room. Um, but uh, she doesn't do, in my opinion, the best um, with the artillery playing more sniper battleship. I mean, maybe sometimes you have to, your flank is collapsing, so you're running 18, 19 kilometers away. Um, she's got the same ballistics. These are Iowa guns. Uh, they're copy and paste, except they are more accurate. They have the same Sigma, but they have a better uh, horizontal and vertical dispersion. So um, that makes them really good in that regard. Um, so that's just something you have to be mindful of and just kind of, I'd say, the best way you're going to get the, your most enjoyment, I would say, is playing this with 12, 15 kilometers um, range of the enemy team. Now, in terms of her armor layout, um, we touched on this a little bit yesterday in the Friday highlights, and this being a team support ship is how I like to refer to the Delaware as, uh, is it's got covered in a lot of 32 millimeter um, on the uh, bow and aft and part of the ship, 32, and then you can see you've got 32 millimeter on the side plating, also torpedo protection, which goes up a little bit more to 38. Um, on the top half, which I think helps with a little bit of that uh, slightly high explosive resilient against uh, destroyers. 38mm uh, also here um, on the deck. But uh, you tend to eat what I would say a lot of penetrations <laughs> across the ship as a whole. Uh, especially, you know, when you're playing against tier 9s, tier 10s, and super ships, uh, you just have to play wisely. Um, and this ship is very, I would say, revolves a lot around positioning uh, really well. I mean, of course, that you can say that for every ship, but if you position poorly in Delaware, you just don't make get a lot of damage. Uh, you don't have a really fun game if you're playing really far back. If you're too aggressive or you get too close, then you die really quickly. Um, so it's just a, a really touch and go. Now, in terms of the turrets, you have 432 millimeter plating on the front. 241 on the sides, 184 on the top, and 305 in the back. So essentially it's the top of the turrets and the side of the turrets are your weakest points uh, on it. And of course this back turret is a little bit of a different story. It actually has a little bit uh, stronger armor, 500 millimeter, 241, 184, and then the back is that 305. Um, so it's kind of fun, <laughs> kind of funny having this one off turret in the back, which I mean is better than what Nebraska had. Uh, this ship is a definite upgrade over Nebraska for sure, because I really hated playing that ship. <laughs> but moving along, let's talk about her modules. So there's no upgrade to the main battery. What you see is what you get. Your stock reload time is 30 seconds, unless you take the reload mod in upgrade in slot six. Um, minimum shell switching uh, time with my build is 12 seconds. Um, 180 degree turn time with 31.3 seconds, which is quite nice in my opinion. HE shell damage 5700, AP shell damage 13,500, uh, also quite nice. In terms of the hull, you do have an upgrade. Hull A is going to have 69,900 hit points, and then you're going to bump up to 80,800 hit points. So definitely this is the first thing you're going to want to research if you just picked up the Delaware. Also that you can see there's also a defense buff and a maneuverability buff uh, to the ship as well. So do pick this uh, upgrade, or sorry, module up first. And then I would say secondly, you wanna go for the gunfire control system. Uh, it takes you from 19.6 kilometers to 21.6 kilometers. So you're adding a two kilometer uh, addition to the main battery firing range. 
Um, and these are accurate guns that it is possible that you can get some good salvos at range. However, you just you lack a lot of penetration with these uh, 406s um, after they have traveled uh, quite some distance. So you won't have the same effect as, of course, being 12 to 15 kilometer window shooting a broadside ship. And then you have your Hell Diver Bombers. Uh, so basically what happens is that the aircraft, they get a buff to their hit points uh, from 2,229 to 2,630. And also a speed addition of 12 knots from 160 knots to 172 knots, meaning you're getting around the map a bit that much quicker. Uh, so it's quite nice. And in Friday's video, I talk a lot about these um, aircraft being as a more complement to your ship. Um, that you use when there's downtime. Otherwise, you do want to try to get the use out of these uh, decent guns. Speed-wise, uh, I needed to mount all. Stock is 33 knots. Um, with the Sierra mic flag, you have 35 knots, which I think this is fantastic to run. Actually, I was thinking about the video we uploaded yesterday and showcasing the Delaware as a live commentary. I actually would have not been able to get the RAM off on the enemy Yamato if I didn't have the Sierra mic flag. Like just because I took a combat signal made a big difference in impact uh, towards the end of the game and helping it be a win. Uh, so that's kind of cool to think about like that the combat signals, you know, they do give you that buff and sometimes they can be game deciding whether you take them or not. And also of course I had the Hotel Yankee uh, combat signal in that instance as well. So 35 knots for a tier nine battleship is quite good in my opinion. Uh, begins to give Illinois run for her money, but Illinois with brisk and that, uh, and I think even stock is still better with the Sierra mic flag. I can look real quick because I'm curious. No, 34 knots, but I have brisk. Um, so <laughs> Delaware is actually faster than Illinois unless you have brisk mounted. Uh, so let's talk about the upgrades. So what I'm going to recommend first and foremost is the main armaments modification one. This reduces the risk of your main battery becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Main battery survivability plus 50%. Main battery repair time, negative 20%. Um, because other than the aircraft, this is your own arm only armament on the ship. So you do want to build into their survivability, in my opinion. You don't even need something like magazine modification, which reduces the risk of a ship's magazine detonating by negative 70%, because you just simply take that Juliet Charlie combat signal when you're playing uh, ranked random battles or planned battles for that matter. Moving on, uh, second slot damage control system modification one. This um, risk of catching a fire, negative 5%, risk of flooding, negative 3%. So you're building into that survivability of your ship, which is definitely needed on the Delaware. Uh, so this is quite good. I've not had a battle yet where my engine has been knocked out. This is typically, you'll see this much more in destroyers and cruisers in the game. For the third slot, I have taken the main battery modification to main battery traverse speed plus 15%. And also with the grease the gears on my commander means that our uh, 180 degree turn time is 31.3 seconds. Uh, typically, I really like to be around 30 seconds in a battleship, um, if not uh, better, um, but this is actually the best uh, that you can get on the Delaware because we have George Doe who has an enhanced uh, skill on the Grease the Gears. Um, you don't need secondary batteries, this is a secondary battleship, neither would I say you need um, AA, uh, priority sector, preparation time reduced, nor do you need to extend the gun range um, of Delaware. If you're playing this at 22, 23, 24 kilometers away, I'd be asking you why are you doing this? Uh, I would be very curious to know. Uh, so really, kind of the main battery modification too, I think is the best overall. And then in the fourth slot, the damage control system modification two, fire extinguishing time, negative 15%, flooding recovering time, negative 15%. This is an aircraft carrier, it is a battleship. You wanna build into the battleship aspects of the Delaware. Um, granted, of course, yes, she's a hybrid battleship, but um, you're always gonna be at risk of having to deal with enemy ships firing upon you or a submarine causing flooding, an aircraft, another enemy aircraft carrier um, setting you on fire, whatever the case may be. So building into your durability stamina on the Delaware, I think is the best overall. Um, the air groups modification three, I only, again, like I said, this is a battleship and this isn't something you normally see on a, um, in a slot four for a battleship. 
This is something much better for like an aircraft carrier or something of that nature because you this is a consumable um, so you can never be deplaned because um, or I'm sorry not a consumable it's an armament meaning you will never run out of them right so you always have five planes every time you take off uh, uh, with um, your HE bomber squadron um, but you have to wait uh, 120 seconds, so two minutes for that preparation time. Okay, and that's two minutes you can be getting farmed by high explosive and torpedoes that cause flooding or a ram. Uh, fifth slot, take the concealment system modification one. We build it into concealment. We have max concealment possible here on the Delaware, giving us 13.1 kilometers. This has made a ship much more comfortable, in my opinion, to play than not going for concealment because uh, honestly, these two just don't compare and contrast to the concealment system modification one it's the clear winner here now something i have tested um i've tested the main battery modification three these guns stock have a better accuracy than both the minnesota and the iowa also in their stock configuration um with not without taking the um, artillery plotting room modification two however sometimes these guns are rather trollish and I get really frustrated by that fact, um, where I feel like they're just not behaving like I would want them to. So in yesterday's Friday highlight, I took the artillery plotting room modification too. I want to try out something different and I felt like let's just build into the accuracy much more. And it's been much more rewarding um, in playing the Delaware because now I feel like I can actually depend on these guns where beforehand with the main battery modification three, I'm like, maybe they'll do something for me. Maybe they won't do something for me. But having this negative 11% to your dispersion, which is means that your vertical and horizontal dispersion is much tighter. Um, normally, um, you would get this third slot aiming systems modification, but they, they don't allow that on American battleships um, because negative uh, 7% and then also adding in a negative 11% would be like basically getting dead eye permanently because you'd be negative 18%. Um, so this is something that's uh, more aligned with the American battleships in the game. And so having that um, tighter shell grouping, your Sigma is 1.9. Um, that's just chances of your shells landing in the center of the target, but the horizontal and vertical dispersion, minimizing those by, I think it's like 20, 30 meters both ways, is really helpful. And I'll throw that at the bottom of the screen as it's probably already there for you to look at. Um, so just go for this. This has been this made the ship much more better in my opinion because you also sometimes you're going to be playing, uh, of course, your planes. So you're not always going to get the best out of that DPM if you just simply take the main battery modification three. Uh, armaments we talked a little bit about already, but one of the things we didn't mention is the fire starting chance, which is 36 percent. So that's decent. Sometimes. Uh, you play this line um, with your HE bombers and then having high explosive loaded. So when you drop, um, set a enemy battleship cruiser on fire and they DCP, uh, and then you're like, hey, I've got high explosive loading or it's loaded. So as soon as your DCP goes down, I'm going to try to set you on fire. So that's one of the advantages because you have two ways of starting fires um, in terms of main armor, uh, excluding the secondaries. Um, so, do take advantage of this when possible. Uh, AP is 13,500 maximum damage. These are 4 and 6 millimeter guns. Same guns, again, as you have on the Iowa in terms of the um, velocity, penetration, all that. Um, it's the same. HE bombers, uh, hit points 2,630, 172 knots. Size of an attacking fight, uh, flight, 5. Uh, you have five aircraft on deck. The aircraft preparation time is two minutes. Your detectability range of these aircraft is nine kilometers. And bombs and payload, you get uh, two bombs and payload, so you're dropping 10 bombs total. And maximum bomb damage is 7,300 if you are able to get um, that maximum off. Now, your armor penetration capacity is 42 millimeters, so. Um, you don't bother, like, so for example, because the flight deck on Delaware is it's 38 millimeters, so I'm not sure if Louisiana is actually going to be stronger or not. I'll have to look uh, when we pick up Louisiana. But you could pin the, the flight deck of an enemy Delaware or an enemy uh, Nebraska, where most aircraft carriers in the game, like, okay, so let's just hop over to Midway as an example. 
and then I'll just get Rick rolled because it won't be it should be more than 42 yeah 87 so you won't pin uh, most aircraft carriers in the game you're not gonna pin their deck so for example let's say I even decide to look at the tier 8 uh, Lexington should also be pretty notable okay it's 25 millimeter um, so that's good <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to hop around to all uh, the different uh, ships in the uh, aircraft carriers in the game, but typically no, for your most of your tier 10, all tier 10s, should be all tier 10s, in super CVs are going to have a, a flight deck that's more than 42 millimeters. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then also you have to be mindful of uh, Russian ships. Uh, like, for example, let's say you ended up coming across a Sovetsky Soyuz. Click here, armor layout. 60 millimeter in here, 32 millimeter on the balance dirt. So basically, you'd really be wanting to go for the superstructure, right? Um, and you could say the same of that as if you were going to HE bomb, um, strike a Lexia uh, midway, you just want to try to target their small superstructure. So, just be note where you're dropping these at, that you're not dropping them on the turrets of a battleship, that you're trying to go for that superstructure, you're trying to go for that deck, um, and then you'll get uh, greater damage. Now these have a 46% chance of uh, starting a fire on target, which is pretty good, especially if you are able to drop all 10 bombs, means you're pretty much guaranteed to get a fire, I mean, theoretically, um, if each one of those 10 bombs has a 46% chance. Uh, so going for like, you know, German battleships in the game have really poor AA, um, we'll reward you with Delaware, in my opinion, and also cruisers that are sitting um, on an island. Uh, da, 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 da. The other thing is a depth charge airstrike. You only get one available flight, um, 10 kilometer range, uh, 30 second reload time. Uh, you get two bombs, and then the maximum bomb damage for each of those bombs is 4,200. Uh, so you got to see that at work against the uh, Gato um, in yesterday's video. In terms of consumables, uh, we have damage control party. It's 20 seconds of action time, cooldown time, 80 seconds. The repair party, uh, HP per second, 404. With India Delta combat signal, it bumps up to 484. So I do recommend running India Delta on Delaware um, and ranked randoms, clan battles. Cooldown time, 80 seconds. Action time, 28 seconds. And then you have fighter aircraft, which don't really do a whole lot. Maybe you spot an sh enemy ship on the opposite side of an island, um, or your fighters are able to pick off the rest of the enemy. Some enemy planes, if it's an aircraft here attacking you, uh, from preventing them from taking a second strike on you, because you're never going to be able to prevent the first strike unless that enemy CV just flies into all of your flak. Um, so do keep in mind that. Other thing to make mention of here is a November Foxtrot. I just got a hundred of them from a super container, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, you can lessen the cooldown time on your consumables. So 76 seconds instead of 80 seconds, 76 seconds instead of 80 seconds. Um, and then here you see 66.5 seconds versus 70 seconds. So you can take that um, as well. And then other combat signals um, I like to take. Uh, let's check the AA rating. 87, Iowa with build 90. So if you take the AA combat signal, it's gonna bump you up to 89. So particularly like on weekends, you tend to see a lot more aircraft carriers in the game. Uh, so then um, I run Novembo, the, this combat signal, uh, the Novembo Echo set seven. So this is what I typically take or something just like this. Cause I wanna build into the speed, so especially since we can get up to 35 knots. Now in terms of our commander, we have George Doe. There are two commanders that you can purchase in the armory, one for 35,000 coal, the other for 1,500 doubloons. Uh, both of them have enhanced skills. Um, and the two enhanced skills they have is gun feeder. So rather than being negative 40%, it's negative 60% uh, shell type switching time. And then the grease the gears versus it being 20%, we have plus 25%. So um, I do recommend that. Um, like I try to run them on um, like my Vermont, um, Georgia, 
Illinois, you know, those type of ships um, in the game, Montana, uh, just because that's very helpful in getting your guns on target that much quicker. So that's where you pick up the commander. So I'm now finally investing in building him up after I've had him for so long. So let's talk about uh, a 10 point build to start things off. Let's say you pick up George Doe and he's got 10 skill points. Where would I recommend putting those 10 skill points in at first here? Um, so I actually did make use of the gun feeder yesterday. You saw how we switched from high explosive when we were chasing a submarine, or we were going after a submarine. Uh, and you're like, what the heck, Flimsy, why did you go after a submarine? You had to watch yesterday's video and kind of understand more why, as I questioned myself being even in it. Um, and then the Ignacio Lende, uh, Pan American cruiser popped up. So we switched back to uh, armor piercing um, with that 12 second. Um, and then I think because of adrenaline rush, it was like even a little less. So I like gun feeder um, with these guns since they're so accurate. Grease the gears is what I'd recommend as a three point commander um, to get that additional um, improved to traverse time to down to that 31.3 seconds. Six point commander, I would recommend it in rush. So then as you start losing health, your guns are gonna start loading 29 seconds, 28 seconds, so on and so forth. Um, won't get much more down beyond that. And then this comes up to you whether you want to go for a 10 point commander if you want a concealment expert or you want the fire prevention expert now what i had done and i think i already had it on this line is i had concealment expert first um because i had george show and some other commander um and I actually had to invest in him a little bit more um to get him up to a 14 point commander um between grinding and playing the game and then using some elite commander xp uh, to pick up fire prevention um just because the ship doesn't do well getting caught out just because as we talked about um you know he had this large uh target here <laughs> right so a lot of enemy ships are firing upon that and getting a lot of pen penetration damage value out of that now another thing to note while we're here is the fire prevention skill which reduces your chances of uh, being caught on fire by negative 10 percent uh, and it also uh, reduces the number of fires from four to three so basically what that is, is that right now, without fire prevention, you would have four fires on your ship, one on the bow, one on the aft, and then two on the superstructure. What fire prevention does is that it takes the two on the superstructure and you only have one fire, which means in total you're ticking for less damage. And because you're in such a large ship, uh, larger ship, you're on an Iowa hull, but you have this large flight deck on your ship, um, it helps. So you're gonna, you're again, you're building into your durability. You're building into your, um, I don't know why I always say stamina, uh, longevity that you're gonna be able to fight in the game longer because you're taking less damage overall. So um, that's up to you, which one you'd like to take first. They both work well, um, but 14 point build definitely needs to be this. For an 18 point build, then I'd recommend taking emergency repair experts. Your damage control party consumable action time is going to go by up by plus 10%. Your repair party consumable action time is also going to go up by 10%. So that means uh, here we're going to go from 20 to 22 seconds. And then here we're going to go from 28 seconds to 30.8 seconds action time. So you're getting a little more use of your damage control party and your repair party. And on top of that, instead of having four repair parties, you're getting five repair parties. Uh, so this is what you want to go for, in my opinion. And then for 21 point commander, basics of survivability. Your module restoration time is going to be reduced by negative 15%. Your fire extinguishing time, negative 15%. Your flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Uh, so having this as your 21 point commander overall, I think is really good. Um, I run this build on other battleships in the game that I've, I have. Um, or it might be instead of having the gun feeder, uh, I would take emergency repair specialist. So then my repair party and damage control party are coming off of cooldown that much sooner by negative 3%. So basically a couple more seconds. Um, so outside of that little difference, this is a pretty traditional battleship build in the game overall. Unless of course you're dealing with something more like um, you have a brawling battleship. So you're building the secondaries or you're wanting to pick up brisk. If you wanted to pick up brisk, I would say do that. Um, do they automatically tick that in for me? Let's see, it's 10%. Uh, uh, so basically, you're going to go 38.5 knots if you were to take Brisk. If you don't want the basics of survivability. If you don't want basic survivability, you really want Brisk, uh, this is what I would recommend to run. Uh, this would be my second option, I guess I would say, uh, for the Delaware or Louisiana 
or Nebraska for that matter. Um, but myself, ah, you just get caught out a lot. Uh, sometimes, I'm not saying a lot, it's just depending on if your team craps and falls apart and then you have to put yourself in a more vulnerable position. Uh, basically, you're gonna be able to last longer in the match and make a more uh, meaningful impact because you're building into survivability, uh, basics of survivability, right? Um, so this is pretty standard battleship build, um, I would say and recommend, um, besides maybe taking something like this on Delaware. So I'm not gonna drag the video out any longer. Um, I really do like try to keep these videos under 30 minutes or shorter if possible. But if you have questions about a skill I didn't cover, please let me know. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, we're planning to do a live stream and I need to make a video about that and I don't know if I'm gonna do it on Twitch or YouTube because I'm gonna start streaming on Twitch. Um, but there's some things I have to talk through with which will be on another video that will have either already gone out on Friday or will go out later on Saturday before I stream on Sunday. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do wanna see more. If you have subscribed already, thanks so much. I would really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.